Welcome back, everybody, to Tie and Gig Builds. Build. Okay. Today, we're going to make an LED cube. It's the Matrix. This is the Matrix right here. This is the Matrix. This is the build. We're going to different dimensions this week, baby. This is really, really cool. Tons of cool animations. The possibilities are endless. We only scratch the surface. It's not a terribly difficult build. Drill a few holes, pop the LEDs in, wire it up and program it. It's very doable, so stay tuned. We're gonna show you guys how we did it. Builds. Hey. Welcome we're, back, we're baby. Back, baby. You knew, you knew we'd be back. <laughs> we're gonna break down this plastic. There's going to be eight layers. We're doing eight by eight cubes, so there's going to be eight sheets we're gonna cut out of this. A four by eight piece of plastic can yield about eight two by two pieces of plastic. So. And we're gonna cube it up and you know we're putting the LEDs in it. You know it's you gonna know, happen. You know it's gonna, you guys know by now, <laughs> it's the gonna LEDs happen. are gonna be squeezed in there somehow. Go! Go. Guys, we got it clamped a lot because we don't want this thing going anywhere. You wanna explain want, what's going on? I don't on? wanna alarm anyone, but we have the eight by eight here X'd off. So we're gonna have 64 LEDs. Right now we need to screw out a thick enough hole to put the LEDs through. Um, but this is very fragile, this plastic we're using. So essentially we're easing into the drilling. What's up guys? It's Gig here. I got a bunch of LEDs. We were able to go to Home Depot, our favorite spot, and actually we found a step drill bit that made it a lot easier for us to put these holes through here. So we got them all Drilled out. Now we're just gonna take these and stick them through the holes in snake formation, just like that, so we can get all these lights on for you. Builds. Too easy with the builds. Alrighty, we just got done finishing all eight layers. The wooden one is gonna be the base. Now we're gonna work our way up to actually making this thing uh, strong. I got these pieces of acrylic I cut down about one inch by two feet, and the whole top, the whole cube is about two feet long. And then I have these smaller pieces, which should be the spacers for each layer, about three inches. We're gonna hot glue everything. I think that should be strong enough to hold the structure in place. It doesn't have to be super strong. And then once everything's kind of held up, I'm gonna start soldering everything, and we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, so it's complete. I just glued up all the layers together. I also reinforced the sides with these longer pieces that hold all the layers together. I did that for all four corners there. Thing to point out is we're starting here, and since it's an even number, we're ending here. And then we're gonna continue the loop here, and then again end on the other side. And it's gonna alternate just like that all the way to the top. And so now I'm just gonna solder the connections between the layers, and then hook up the Raspberry Pi and see if we can do some basic animations and then I'm gonna to try to program some really cool ones. We'll see how we can get out of it. Okay, here's the circuit that's gonna power everything. We have the Raspberry Pi 
And then this is just auxiliary to help feed ground to the circuit. And then we have a five volt power source. And just because there's so many LEDs, I need the power source to be fed from the beginning, the end, and the middle, just for even voltage distribution. Now the Raspberry Pi is a 3.3 volt data signal, which goes and sends data to the WS2812 BLEDs. Unfortunately, they need a five volt data signal, which this circuit is used for. This circuit steps up the voltage from 3.3 volts to five volts. There's more on that in other videos I make. It's a very common circuit. I'll leave a link to that. So let's dip into the code now and see how this thing goes. Before we get started, I just want to give credit to the libraries I'm using. I'm using BiblioPixel to power the WS2812 BLEDs. And there's another library, BiblioPixel Animations, which help do the animations. So this library is not complete, but I did use a lot of it. And so in some parts, I copy and paste the code directly from this part. Other parts, I modify it. And other parts, I create my own. And that's why I didn't just solely use this library. I downloaded bits and pieces and kind of patched this thing together to make it work with my use case. Now, like I said, the only dependency is the BiblioPixel library. So if you'd like to know how to download that and install it, I recommend watching my previous video. I use the message board to do it. I go over it in great length. I also go over the circuit in great length. You can also look at the documentation for BiblioPixel. It's pretty extensive. Once you have BiblioPixel installed, that is the only requirement for the code that I'm going to be using. So going through the code, like I said, I have a bunch of different animations that I made. Some were copied directly and some were modified. The first thing we do is initialize the driver, which is going to power the WS2812 BLEDs, and then we pass that driver to the layout. The layout is just a way to map a coordinate system to the actual physical object. So I created this object snake cube. Snake cube is just part of the cube hierarchy, and cube is coming from Bibliopixel. It modifies the way that we define X, Y, and Z. Unfortunately, cube did not account for snaking Z patterns, so I had to modify the code a little bit here just to account for the snaking Z patterns, and that's all I'm doing. Now, once you have the layout defined, all you have to do is uncomment any animation that you'd like to run. So in this case, if I wanted to run the Matrix movie animation, I would just uncomment this, and you'd see that we have an animation called Cube Rain, which I made that accepts the layout that we define the snake cube along with some other parameters to actually make the matrix animation happen on cube. Assuming that you have BiblioPixel installed, the only thing you need to do right now is download my repository. So simple enough, the repository is called AnimateCube and so we're just gonna get clone AnimateCube. I'll link that in the description. Okay, and now that it's downloaded, you can go to the AnimateCube directory list it out and you have everything you need and then all you do is need to run it with sudo python3 animate.py Guys, another video, another build, another banger. This looks really cool. This is like one of the coolest this things. This thing was made. blowing my mind last night with some of the beauty shots and how cool it looked. The only thing I wish, I wish we had more time because we could do even cooler animations. Like one of the things that I want to do is have like a triangular prism or just something shape in there that's just rotating and you can see it from all angles. This came out great. I can only imagine a few tweaks, like we could probably cut these off yeah. Uh, if we really wanted to, we could put this base in an actual box and have the electric components on the bottom, but as a proof of concept, this, this definitely is like, it works. Definitely it's a little expensive, but a lot less soldering. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you find this cool, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, give us some feedback, because this one came out really cool. Yeah, I'd really like to know what kind of animations you think would be cool with this type of object, because I want to create more and I'm going to, and I really want ideas, so please comment about what you think could be cool to add here. Next week, we got a Halloween build. I started last night working on the Halloween build. It's going to be a cool one for you guys. We'll see you next week on Builds. Builds, builds baby. So you got, you got yeah, two you know, yeah, there we go. Okay. If we don't get it the first time, we'll get it the next time. <laughs>